Iowa, Michigan, his professional record, 28 victories, no defeat, two draws, 20 KOs, presenting the IBF middleweight champion of the world, James Lights Out. the fighters meet in the middle of the ring let's go ahead and look at the tail of the tape and get the numbers on these two guys Tiberi a couple of years older this is a struggle for James Coney to make the 160 pound weight limit other than that they're remarkably similar the IBF rules are in effect scorings on the 10 point must the three knockdown and the standing eight count are not in effect a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round and only the referee can stop the fight and that referee is this gentleman here Robert Palmer from New Jersey who's working his first title fight and we're underway in the first round here on our Fruit of the Loom professional boxing series but a good left digging into the ribs here by James Tony grabbed there by James Siberi too he said at the top he's a game kid he's determined he just looks to be outgunned when you stand toe-to-toe -to -toe like this and if you hit me and I'll hit you you just have to be the man with the superior artillery and on the basis of their records Dave Tiberi is just way way out yeah. but right now he's backing Tony up and there is another good right hand by Tiberi James Tony is a patient fighter he's generally a slow starter he likes to take his time in fact good left there by Tiberi when James won the title from Michael Nunn with an 11-round match Good right back. Big right hand by Tony. By Tony. James is behind a little cards. Yeah. And right now, Alex Tiberi appears to be a little bit rattled. His gloves are creeping down as Tony got in there with a good combination. But you see, James, he doesn't go crazy when he senses his man's hurt a little bit. As we said, takes his time right now, just content to cover. Certainly a a different start for James Tony than he led us to believe that he was going to have yesterday uh, spewing forth some real venom about Dave Tiberi and his camp and comments they had to say about him anytime Those, you see I'm sorry Dan, anytime yeah. you see two fighters with their heads as close together as these two you think about cuts and Dave Tiberi and there the two heads met Dave Tiberi has a history of cutting especially over his left eye it was over the left eye that a nearly four inch gash was opened up in his fight with Tony Thornton and I don't think that up against the ropes is where Dave Tiberi wants to be against James Tony who's now starting a little target practice with the right hand there was a good right coming back from Tiberi but didn't seem to phase Tony there's Dave's mother who's at ringside along with a rather large contingent from Delaware Supposedly 500 people here. Right, it's just a family showed up. I mean, yeah. 14 yeah. kids, oh. seven brothers were fighters. Right now, I think Dave feels like he he's fighting all seven of yes. them. Yes. We're inside the final 30 seconds of the first round here. This title bout scheduled for 12. But you see, James Tony does not sustain the pressure. And I think the reason for this is... In some of his early fights, he ran out of gas badly. Won the fights, but was desperate in terms of running. And I think he paces himself. Fights and flurries like you see here. Oh, and Tiberius staggered here at the end of the first. One, Tony on the right, a right hand on the temple. And that left hook staggered Tiberius. And here we are now live in the second round, opening seconds. Again, Dave Tiberi willing to settle in in close quarters with James Tony. You have to admire his heart, you have to admire his chin, you have to admire his toughness, but this kind of strategy is just suicidal. Well, in between rounds, we could hear Tiberi's corner saying to him, this guy can't stand in there with you. I, I know you got to preach self-confidence to your fighter, but that's, that's going a little overboard. And you talked to him in the first round about the 500 tickets that Dave Tiberi sold to his fans. Sounds great for the promoter, but it's not so good for Dave because when they start cheering and he gets juiced up, yeah. he does exactly what he shouldn't do, and that's try to trade with Tony. Right now, Tiberi ought to settle in for the duration and try to try to score some points. He score some points from distance. From distance. Use that jab, but move a little bit. Try to confuse Tony a little bit. Don't just stand there and let him tee off. It is well known that James Tony is managed by a woman. Her name is 
is Jackie Callen, and there she is at ringside, and it's a wonderful story between these two. And Jackie Callen here is not just another pretty face. She oh, is one of the best managers God. in boxing. Yeah, woman, woman. This should be a fight of the year for the job she did for James yeah. in 1991. She is really a well-respected boxing manager. James, I'm sorry. Dave Tiberi doing some scoring there as Tony takes time off in the ropes. And we must remind you that those punches, they are scoring punches. But as we pointed out at the top of the show, Dave Tiberi just has no power at all in that punch. We'd like to remind our local ABC stations that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. Again, the strategy of Tiberi here working inside, and that time he backs James Tony out of the out of the confrontation. It was that time Tiberi making Tony give ground. But still, you wonder about that strategy over the long haul. David will have his moments because of what we said about the fact that Tony likes to fight in spurts. Backing off his feet. As Tony is doing here, just laying on the ropes and not doing much. The problem is, what is what, how much punishment does Dave take in those spurts? A nice move by Tony, spinning off the ropes. And now he loads up on Dave Tiberi. He, he just missed four straight, and uh, yep. Dave did a good job defensively right. there. Coming to the end of the third round, we'll return with more Fruit of the Loom professional boxing after a word from our ABC station. For Tony's IBF middleweight title. Look at Dave Tiberi fight. I mean, we said game, we said determined at the top. He really is, and, and I think it's possibly won that second round. Dave Tiberi comes from a state without a huge boxing tradition in Delaware, but we should point out that he trains at Champs Gym in North Philly, and this is just another Philly gym war for Dave Tiberi. Speaking of great fighters, how about that guy right there? Thomas Hearns is here at ringside, the hitman, and Alex, one of my all-time favorites. I know yours as well. And the reigning WBA light heavyweight champion with a big multi-million dollar match down the road against Iran Barkley. That was quite Iran a fight. Was also here. Quite a fight he had against Virgil Hill. I mean, it was a masterpiece for the hitman. Look at, I mean, Tiberi again. They played the Rocky theme when he came in, and David is determined to write his own script. <laughs> or to well, keep to the script, I should say. And James Tony, of all people, should know how that script works. <laughs> trailing on all the scorecards when he knocked out Michael Nunn in the 11th. And now the interesting thing is, with half this third round gone, is James Tony really has done nothing in this round. Tiberi has dominated it, and Tiberi looks at this point like he's prepared to keep up this pace for a while, and James Tony has to decide, am I going to try to stay with him, or can I afford to concede these rounds to him and rely on my power to bail me out in the later rounds? That's a tightrope. I mean, oh, Tony looks a little hurt. James Tony. He was definitely wobbled there by a man that we have written off as a man with absolutely no power. Now, Tony's eyes appear to be focused and his legs appear to be under him, but there was no doubt that that shot hurt James Tony. I, I should say, Dan, in fairness to you, that I've written off. You know <laughs> What I'm with you, we sink or swim together. <laughs> you can jump this one. <laughs> Tiberi has set a tremendous pace. Tony has not been able to stay with him at this point. You Tony is out of gas right now. His mouth is open. And listen to this pro Tiberi crowd as James Tony, remarkably here in only the third round. To give you Here we come to the end of the third. Remember, we're scheduled for 12. Gary, who is up off his stool with 15 seconds left in that break between rounds, and a very sloop-shouldered James Tony stayed on his stool as long as he could, Alex. He's right here in round four, and he has to get a second win. But, you know, he didn't get to this point.
James Tony, without having a lot of guts, a lot of resiliency, a lot of comeback ability, as he showed against Michael Nunn in winning the title. Well, a good there right hand. Some of it right there. Yeah, a good right hand by James Tony. But he has not prepared for this fight, obviously. For him to be that dead tired at that point, After he has nine not minutes prepared about. for this fight the way he did for the big fights. And Dave Tiberi, to give you an idea, and I'm not saying he's, you know, he's won the last two rounds on my scorecard, but this fight, you could not put a bet on this fight. I mean, they talk about Buster Douglas Tyson being 42 to 1. There was no line on this fight. It was off the board. And you can get a line on two birds sitting on a telephone line as to which one will fly away first. When you can't get a line on a fight, it's lopsided. And it's a, it's a phone booth fight right now. I mean, there's no movement. It's just two guys stand together. And right now, the heart and the conditioning. I mean, this is just a conditioning war. And Tiberi is clearly at this point, despite his lack of power, in better condition to deliver more punches. And Alex, I don't care what anybody says about being the underdog. There is always a shadow of doubt in your mind as to whether or not you can win. Right now, I think all that doubt has been removed from Dave Tiberi's mind. Yeah, he I thinks he can win this fight. And, and interestingly, James Tony is not desperate yet. He's gathering himself. He's taken. He's given up rounds. There's no question about that. But he's counting on uh, Tiberi punching himself out. Mark Condreth, who's the manager of Dave Tiberi, and right now his stomach's rolling over, but he can't be unhappy. Mark Condreth's stomach was rolling over the day he found out that Tiberi got this fight. He's been nervous as a cat. <laughs> But right now he's got, you know, right now he's, he's got to be saying, right now. he's got to be saying to himself, oh dare I think it. Good right hand by Tony. Oh there, there was a good short clipping left hook by Tony. And this is the only serious punching by James Tony that we've seen here in the fourth round. And, what and it looks that? like that might be all we see. He can't sustain it. And he's taking up punches. I started to say hard punches, and I can't contradict myself, but he's taken enough to keep him occupied and just test him all the way down to his soles of his shoes. Well, I'm not sure what James Tony was expecting out of this fight, but I'll guarantee you this wasn't it. Oh, in the fourth round, and James Tony doesn't even get out of his corner. The fifth round, rather. I'm sorry, I said the fourth. Without Dave Tiberi smothering him in his corner and, and Alex we were listening between rounds and James Tony was trying to respond to his trainer Bill Miller and he could hardly talk he's breathing so heavily absolutely exhausted but you know remember the Reggie Johnson fight the first fight he had after knocking out Michael Nunn right. he, came, he was knocked down early in the fight he was way behind on points but he held himself together, despite the fact that he fell way behind, and pulled out the fight in the final round. That fight was last June 29th. But James Tony didn't look this tired, this exhausted then. No, but you would have thought he would have learned a lesson, and that is, you know, to do everything you can to prepare for even a lesser opponent. Don't forget, at the conclusion of this fight, we'll have an update on the Mike Tyson trial. Marianne Grabovoy is in Indianapolis, and we'll go to her for a report at the conclusion of this fight. Mike Tyson finished his testimony today under cross-examination. Again, all Tiberi. At the halfway mark of the fifth round, championship fight in terms of letting a title fight go oh a good right hand counter by tony but most of the scoring here in the fifth has been done by dave tiberi and the beautiful thing that dave has done is when james tony has fought in his flurry as soon as he finishes tiberi knows that he's out of gas and he's jumped right out of him Great not point. let him catch his breath and not let him take time off very good point alex Swallow and Dan Yerdorf here ringside in Atlantic City. 
We're here for the Fruit of the Loom Professional Boxing Series. This is our first of three consecutive Saturdays. And what a performance we're seeing by Dave Tiberi here, trying to wrest the title away from James Tony. Tony in the black trunks, Tiberi in the white. for Dave Tiberi. Getting a much needed rest while they fix the tape job. And you can see they're not just Don't fixing the tape job, Alex. They're taking the it all the way off. Well, let's take over this fight. They're taking the glove off. Listen to me. I want to see some jabs out here this time. Give this guy some movement. He's coming straight to you. You hit him on the chin with the big shots. Give him some angles now. Give him a new look. Because there wasn't no blows. Uh, Alex, what could have uh, what could have happened to make them take the entire glove off? Well, they must have, must have split. That's all. They're 10-ounce Reyes gloves, and it just must have split. We're getting the glove brought over to us by okay. Bob Yale. There it is. Making the world land speed record. The bottom oh, the, yeah, the seam split. On the bottom, exactly yeah. right, Dan. The bottom seam opened up, yo, yo, and that's a dangerous yo. condition. And they, the referee really had no choice but uh, to, uh, uh, let, let me, sh Dan, show it to him. The referee really has no choice. Right here. And uh, you're right, they have no choice. But man, for James Tony, what a... Is that ready, Mario? Do we have any... He's got some sort of a, a respiratory ailment or something that's curtailing him here. Or if he's dead at the weight. Or if he's dead at the weight, because he did have to work hard to make the weight. Oh. And that delay was a little over four minutes, so quite a break for James Tony. Now, James Tony didn't get in shape in those four minutes. Yeah, you do. know what I mean? He got a rest, but he didn't get in shape. And if Dave Tiberi can continue the pressure, he can take away, you know, what the benefits of that break. The problem is he's got to fight. He's got to avoid the power of Tony while he's fresh, which is right now. <laughs> of Tiberi. We should report also, Dan, that that left eye that we talked about, we lost, we forgot about it, and all the controversy, not the controversy, but the glove uh, removal. Tiberi's left eye was nicked in the last round, worked on by the legendary Eddie the Clot Iliano in uh, Tiberi's corner, but it's puffy and it's slightly cut, and I'm just amazed it hasn't blown up uh, already, to be, to be honest, with the right hands that Tony has landed and the closeness of their heads. Well, more than the glove, you're, you brought up the point earlier that it's the unintentional butting that takes place. That, that, that's the easiest way to open up an eyebrow. And halfway through round six, Tony, when he was fresh, did not do a lot of damage. Some soon he's going to go back to, to being that groggy kind of sleepwalking James Tony of the, the first five rounds, except for that moment where he hurt Tiberi at the end of the first. The crowd and now Robert Palmer low steps low. in and separates the fires and it warns Tiberi about hitting low. And here's it from the uh, Tiberi fans. Yeah, much to the chagrin of the crowd, but. Don't go by crowd noise here. I, uh, I'm not sure they're an accurate barometer. <laughs> Again, Tony leaning back on the rope. But he's doing that by choice. Yeah, but he's doing no story. Tiberi's just walking forward, and Tony, who's a strong young kid, just can't stop him. And Tony is not a, a fighter who <laughs> scores moving backwards. I mean, that's not his game, Alex. He's got one nice little move with the right hand, Dan, where he can roll back and then brace himself and let the right hand counter go. But all that skill, that punch, that, that little move that he used so many times against Mike McCallum, none of that skill is present here against a much lesser opponent. Here we come to the end of round six. 
In between rounds, Robert Palmer, the referee, detracted and subtracted a point from Dave Tiberi for low blow in that last round. So in your scoring, and we deduct a point from Tiberi. And we should point something out. If you might have heard, when we were isolated on James in his corner, he said to Bill Miller, tell the referee to watch the low blows just before the start of the last round. Bill Miller, his trainer, did that, and it paid a dividend. You see lots of warnings about low blows. You don't see many actual point deductions. And Robert Palmer, again, a reminder, working his first title fight, penalize, penalizes Dave Tiberi. Action in the seventh round here in Atlantic City. I just never saw a low punch in that exchange that caused the deduction. No, I, I have to agree, Alex. Neither did I. That's a tribute to his manager, Jackie Callum. Dave Tiberi wearing a cross on his shorts. Of course, he's a Sunday school teacher and a deeply religious man himself. So both in their own way, expressing some belief. A minute, 20 seconds left here in the seventh round. There hasn't really been a, a meaningful blow struck in this round. And, and for the first time since the, the oh. first round, Dave Tiberi was, for a moment at least, back on the ropes. And there he is. Again, he happens to be comfortable fighting off the ropes. He likes it. He thinks it gives him leverage. But it's the first little sign that of, of Tony being able to, you know, turn it around a little bit right there. There was a good there, combination. Tony pushing him back on the ropes. Yeah. And you see some blood now. On Dave Tiberi, that's around his nose. Tough to determine from right here where it's emanating from, but there's definitely blood on the nose of Tiberi. If we, if we haven't paid enough tribute to the guts and determination, whatever the outcome of this fight of Dave Tiberi in the white trunks with his back to you, let me just take this opportunity to do it again. He is just a non-stop punching machine. Maybe... Uh, Maybe five of those pity bad punches of his equal a good solid punch. He's thrown it from all angles, and he just has not stopped throwing them in the fight. We're scheduled for a dozen. This is the end of the seventh. There's Dave Tiberi on the left, James Tony on the right. Tiberi from Wilmington, Delaware. Now lives in Pike Creek, Delaware. James Tony, originally from Ann Arbor. Michigan and now resides there but spends most of his time in Detroit training. James Tony is the IBF middleweight champion and that title very much in jeopardy from the pressure of Dave Tiberi here through the first seven. We're now in the eighth. And we got a report that, you know, Dave Tiberi is, let me just total it up here. I got him, I believe, with the one-point deduction, four points ahead. Uh, in the fight, right now, I'm not so sure. <laughs> it looks like it's going the distance. The crowd reacting to James Tony being back on the ropes. I mean, he's certainly not making a great effort to get off the ropes, but he was there that time by choice. Sometimes a young fighter just thinks that when he's got power, he can totally rely on that one-punch power to bail him out of anything. And James Tony has certainly gambled his title and his reputation and a lot of his future, his immediate future, on that bet. And right now, he's losing that bet badly. We'd like to remind our local ABC stations that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. The punches from Jay, and that's a good indication, Alex, but he's swung that left. And he switched. Just the effort to swing the punch took and him off balance. For a moment, James Tony switched to southpaw. That's not a concession. I don't know what is. That's an act of desperation. James Tony. I shouldn't say concession. I understand. He ain't the fight. No, but his body looks like it is. 
We know his mind isn't, but right now it appears that James Tony's body is betraying him. For whatever reason. For one reason, he didn't prepare himself. Well, I'm sure you're right, Dan. You said earlier he could have some physical ailment that we're not aware of. And I shouldn't prejudge. I mean, we've seen him before, and he's never looked like this. I mean, the physical stamina and conditioning that he displayed in that Mike McCallum fight, I thought was awesome. But give Tiberi credit. He is taking, he is creating a pace here that just is not allowing Tony the time to rest that he's had in other fights. And the fans continue to chant, TNT Tiberi. Here we come to the end of the eighth round. We'll return with more Fruit of the Loom professional boxing after a word from our ABC station. Opponent for the referee, Robert Palmer. Both fighters continue to trade punches after the bell, and Palmer stepped in there and paid for it. Here we go in round number nine. Whatever blood was coming from Dave Tiberi was cleaned up during the round, and it really doesn't seem to be a major concern right now unless it starts to come out a great deal more. Again, a reminder that after this fight, we'll go to Indianapolis for an update on the Mike Tyson trial. And right now, James Tony has a trial of his own underway. Card into the territory where James Tony needs a knockout to win, even with the one-point deduction, which I think was not warranted uh, by Robert Palmer. There was a blow, I believe, on the ropes. There was a warning pri previous to that round, but I just think there have been a lot of low blows, borderline punches by both men, and I thought that that was a referee in his first title fight with a little bit too fast a trigger. We're at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. It's snowing outside, but boy, it is hot stuff in the ring here. And you see that that pathetic right hand by Tony. And, and now Tiberi comes back, but Alex, he almost fell down throwing it. I don't know if James Tony at this stage has enough to hurt as game and his tongue and is a fighter with as good a chin as Dave Tiberi. Oh, and a good scoring flurry by Tiberi. Scoring punches back to back. If you ever saw quantity over quality, this is it. James Tony's taking a ton of punches to the head. He is unmarked. Well, but meanwhile, he just has not been able to get anything of himself off, his own punches off, in the face of his buzzsaw. Well, we know that Tiberi is not a knockout artist. He's had 27 professional fights and only seven knockouts. So he's he's not a he's not a hired assassin in that respect. But to hear the crowd chanting TNT, that's for their man Dave Tiberi, who's in command here as we come to the end of the night. One can only assume that a crowd can spur a guy on, or at least the fighter can hear the crowd. This one is directly behind Dave Tiberi. He has three rounds to go. The 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, and it has been a sterling effort on his part to this point. <laughs> and look at Ty Berry doing things you wouldn't think he'd be able to do, pushing James Coney away when he wants. the point all the way back in the third or fourth round I believe that at this stage of the fight even if James Tony connects with a clean punch you wonder if he's going to have the power behind it to take Dave Tiberi out even if he would connect with a clean one let me just try to give you a sense of how big an upset this would be the man in the black trunks on the left of your screen was the fighter of the year last year. He knocked out Michael Nunn, a seemingly invincible champion. 
He got a, a draw, but everybody thought an unlucky draw against Mike McCallum, the other great power in the middleweight division. The man with his back to you has never beaten a name fighter, anything close to a name fighter. The closest he came was Tony Thornton, uh, and he lost that fight on a fourth round TKO because his, his eye busted up terribly, a four inch gash. He's retired from the ring a couple of times and come back. He struggled with, with club fight opposition, and here he is in the ring with a man that I and I, I think a lot of other people saw to be on the verge of greatness, and he's just beating him, and beating him decisively. James Coney not fighting with a great deal of urgency. Tiberi continues to stay in close. by Tony. You know, Dan, boxing's uh, legend says that to take a man to fight, you have to beat him badly. Tony's had his moments, especially the first round, but aside from that, in a couple, only a couple of close rounds, you just can't imagine that Dave Tiberi hasn't won the rest of them decisively enough to get the judges. And don't forget also, he has... 500 or so of his fans here in Atlantic City with him. So the judges are hearing from it every time Tiberi does well. We're coming to the end of the 10th round. Two to go. Palmer signals the fighters to get started here in the 11th. And Mark Condreth, the manager of Dave Tiberi, between rounds said, Dave, two more rounds and you're world champion. And James Tony sat in his school and told his corner that he feels good. Came out later, one good punch, he does not look good. And neither did he look on the faces of Bill Miller, his trainer, and Jackie Callen, his manager. Dave Tiberi's trunks in front are, are stained with blood. It's his blood coming from a little nick perhaps over his eye, but probably from his nose. We said at the early in this fight that James Tony paces himself. He's patient because in, a, in some of his early fights he ran out of gas and, and he just likes to be able to take time off and to set the pace. In this fight, with the exception of the closing seconds of round one, Dave Tiberi has forced the pace. Every time Tony wanted a rest, Tiberi would not let him. And he just sucked the air out of him. He just exhausted him just by the sheer force of his determination. And right now, Tiberi is, is getting out in that power range, Alex. I know you're a big believer that there's that, that real sweet spot out there where a guy's maximum power is. Tiberi's been affected by staying inside, inside of Tony's range. And a couple times here, he's kind of drifted out a little bit. That's dangerous. I've been wrong in about as many ways as you could be about this fight. I thought uh, that Tiberi had no chance in this kind of a fight because of Tony's edge of power. I thought it was suicidal to, to stay in tight instead of moving and trying to take some of Tony's power away by not letting him set. And Dave Tiberi has proved that, that just by being prepared to throw an incredible number of punches and having an incredible chin and ability to stand up, that you can beat a fighter as highly regarded as James Tony, or you can get way ahead in the closing seconds Again, again, a reminder to our audience, we don't have a scorecard over here. There's Mario Tiberi, Dave Tiberi's brother, his Back trainer, the fighter himself, and right now, soulmate. <laughs> you could tell by the look on his face. It was the 11th round when James Tony came up with the, the miracle punch that he needed to knock out Michael Nunn. The 11th round is just about gone. It is an 11th round in which he will not find that miracle against Dave Tiberi. We'll be back for the 12th and final round in a moment. Oh, and there's James Tony. A real act of desperation by a man who, by our account here ringside, is three minutes away from having his IBF middleweight title taken away by the man on the left, Dave Tiberi. And we should say, and, and you know, this is something you always say, 
in, a, in any fight is that we, our scorecards, I've got him ahead by three points with the one point deduction. I'm sorry, four points with the one point deduction. That does not mean that the people at ringside see it the same way. I thought Tony beat McCallum by four points, and he got a draw. Strange things have happened in Atlantic City and, and all over the world in boxing, but do not, even if Tiberi lasts uh, this round and even if Tiberi wins this round, our scorecards mean nothing. No, you're right. And again, we must put in perspective, if Tiberi should upset Tony, the magnitude of that upset. You could not even place a bet on this fight. That's how big an underdog Dave Tiberi was to the champion James Tony. Now, one thing to keep in mind, Tiberi's already been penalized one point for a low blow. And he's thrown a couple borderline punches here that looked low here in the 12th. Tiberi is not in a position to make a mistake like that and have it come back to haunt him. Inside a minute and a half here in the 12th. James Tony has had been the victim a couple of times of the officials here in Atlantic City. Time out there. Again, a glove problem. Just a little tape this time. And there's Robert Palmer, the referee, stepping in. We should say that in the murky Sosa fight, which James appeared to win decisively, James gets another rest here. Uh, boy, he's a... He can Look hardly. James, he can barely get over to his corner. James so Tony, he dragged his right leg going over there. James Tony is limping. He's either having a cramp or some cold muscle, a problem with his right leg. He actually dragged his right leg to the neutral corner. And you can see the way that he's working off his instep rather than up on the ball of his right foot. I was going to say, Dan, that, that James Tony's had some strange decisions in Atlantic City. He looked to be a clear winner over Murky Sosa, only got a split decision. Looked to be a clear winner over Mike McCallum, got a draw. His manager, Jackie Callen, sent a letter to the commission protesting. It'd be interesting to see if that has any effect on the judges here. James Tony right now is hurt. He cannot move, and he's going to have to remain stationary. 30 seconds here left in the 12th round. The crowd, the Dave Tiberi crowd here, coming from nearby Delaware, is on their feet. Approaching 15 seconds. Dave Tiberi in the white trunk appears to have wrestled away the championship from James Tony. It'll go to a decision here in Atlantic City. I said at the top that he didn't have a chance because of the power. While the scene plays out here in the ring, and we await the decision, let's go now to Indianapolis for that Mike Tyson report. Here's Mary Ann Crababoy. Well, we just saw an exciting 12 rounds here in Atlantic City. Here's ring announcer Michael Buffer. Frank Brunette scores about 117 to 111 for Dave Tiberi. Bill Lurch scores about 115 to 112 for James Tony. Frank Garcia scores about 115 to 111 for the winner by split decision. And still IBF middleweight champion of the world, James Drakeback. We'll be back. And, uh, after what has to be, in my opinion, one of the most disgusting decisions I've seen, James, first of all, what was your, uh, did you, in your wildest dreams, did you think you won that fight, James, honestly? Yeah, I did. I'm serious. You know, I don't know what the hell you was looking at. All you guys out there, you got some fools. Because um, if you look at the shots, I was blocking most of the shots on my arms and shoulders. And I'll tell y'all looking at it, once again, y'all incompetent analysts and judges out there, you know, I'm tired of all that bullshit y'all out there doing, trying to degrade me and she got my world champion. You know, Dave, too, I took my hat off to him. He's a good fighter. You know, he deserves to be in the top ten. And I fight. this is my last fight as a middleweight. I'm no longer a middleweight. I'm moving to super middleweight. I had trouble making weight. I've been, I have, I've been starving for two weeks. And now this is it. I got to cut you loose. We have very little time. I got to get a reaction from Dave Tiberi. Uh, I thought it was, it was a great fight. James is a tough fighter. Uh, I thought I pulled it out. I did my best. I, a lot of hard work for over two months with uh, 
up in Slit Sl Sl Rock uh, Lodge and also Champs Gym with Bernard Hopkins, Pr Prince Charles. I did everything I could to be a world champion. And I just felt, I like, I was, I was, I felt like I was deprived. Thanks, David. You were, in my opinion. Let's go back to Dan Deardorff at ringside. Okay, thank you, Alex. And James Tony retains his middleweight championship in an incredible decision here in Atlantic City. See you next week in Phoenix, folks.